Hello everyone, this is Mike Madsen, and today I want to discuss track templates and why they're important. I'm going to actually touch upon four topics, but what I'm going to do is walk through the logic of setting up a typical vocal track using both parallel effects and submixes, and then I'm going to show you what the track templates do as far as inserts are concerned. First, I'll touch upon parallel effects. Parallel effects are used when a signal is processed by an effect in parallel with the original signal, and both signals are passed forward separately. Delay effects are typically employed as parallel effects in a post-fader send. Why post-fader? I'm going to introduce two new terms. One is direct sound, which is the sound that comes directly from the source, and this is the main channel sound. The second is critical distance, and that's the listening distance beyond which a reverberation tail will actually sound louder than its source. Once you get beyond this distance, it can sound muddy or unrealistic. For this reason, post-fader is chosen for delay effects to ensure that we don't inadvertently make the reverberation louder than its direct path. So where we are so far is I have a vocal track that goes down to a master bus if I'd inserted it into a new project. I have four parallel sends that are set up. They come off post fader and they're also going down to the master bus. Now I'll touch briefly upon submixes. Submixes are buses where multiple signals are brought together for further processing. These are very useful to combine logical elements which will contribute to the stereo image created in the mixing process. Or buses which can be used for monitoring mixes as well. An example here would be a vocal bus where I'd want to combine two takes of the same vocal or I'd want to introduce background vocals onto it for processing and stereo image placement. And now what I've created is two new buses. I have a vocal bus which can include more vocal tracks and I have a submaster bus which is sort of a, a step in front of the master bus which allows for better monitoring capability or to put effects on before it gets to the master bus. For a typical vocal track, I also want to have a front bus which would include anything that's supposed to be prominent in the song. So if I were using an acoustic guitar, I would have an acoustic guitar track feed into the same bus. Additionally, I also prefer the option to include delay effects, specifically re reverb, on those submixes instead of the original tracks. So this gives me the option to choose that. Now what I've done is I've gone from this that we saw in the last picture to this. I now have a front bus included and I have three reverbs. Typically the plate reverb can be used to a minimal extent on a vocal track, but the room and the hall reverb are either or. And depending on where I want to use them, I may not use either or I may use one or the other, but typically not both and typically only off of one bus. So now that you've seen this, I'm sure your reaction is, are you kidding me? And actually, no. This is the reason why I chose track templates for this project. Setting up tracks in this way, if you do it from scratch each time, can be incredibly tedious. There's two options that are available. One, you could save a project template or even an entire project and just rename it each time you open it. Or you could save track templates. The big point of this presentation is once you have gone through this work once or once you've created a little bit more than what you used last time, save it. Save it for future use so you don't have to redo your work again. Why do I default to track templates? There's a few reasons for this. One, a project template for an incredibly large project with effects inserted can be so big that they actually do insert latency on their own and it makes real-time recording difficult. Second, track templates allow for a much more tactical approach. If I want to insert a vocal track in one project, I can just insert that track and work with it until I need to add more. Thirdly, the big thing with track templates and the reason that I like them is because what they do is they save not only your routing presets and your buses, but they also save the actual effect settings that you have. So if I have an equalization curve that I love from my voice, then I can actually insert a track template and that EQ curve is already set up and ready to use. So this is what I have, and I've actually gone ahead and set this up in Sonar X3. By saving it as a track template, it allows me to do this. In Sonar X3, if I go down, insert from a track template, vocals from the Coursera presentation, you can see that what I have actually inserted is a vocal track, the four parallel sends that were discussed, and down here is the channel for that track, and the associated buses, all of which were discussed in the PowerPoint presentation. What this has done for me is they're already routed, they already have the effects assigned, they're already preset to what I used last time I used them, and I'm ready to go. So in summary, 
think through the logical signal pathing that you do normally. Take the time to create those parallel effects and submixes as required. Don't worry about doing this all at once. It's an iterative process and you'll learn as you go. And the big picture is when you're finished with this work, be sure to save the track or even the project as a template so you can use it again later. That's all I have time for and thank you very much. This is Mike Madsen and thanks a lot for watching.